thank you for giving me another uh, opportunity to speak here. My point is never brother. <laughs> yeah, I know the last time I spoke five minutes over the limit, so this time I'll, <laughs> I won't. And also, it's good to see uh, people I've met before some for a very long time. Uh, today, I'd like to speak about the parable of the sower. And I, I'm sure you're thinking I've had, had this par parable many times. This parable is found in Matthew chapter 13 and verses 1 to 23. It's also found in Mark chapter 4, 1 to 20, and Luke chapter 8, verses 4 to 15. Now it's called the parable of the sower. However, if you read the parable, it seems to be talking about four types of soil. So you may wonder why it's called why it's not called the parable of the soil but the Lord himself calls it the parable of the sower and I believe this is because sowing is a very important job uh, the seed is very important uh, the gospel message the uh, message of God's love his mercy uh, the message of our faith our response to God's uh, the love and also the me all the messages in the Bible that's the seed however if the message is not shared if the seed is not sowed then the message is wasted the seed is wasted and the good soil is also wasted so even if, uh, with my message today uh, it will fall on four types of uh, seeds uh, four types of uh, soil because it, any message from the from the word is like a seed so in this parable we read of four types of soil uh, once uh, uh, just imagine a, a farm in the old olden times don't imagine a modern farm because the modern farms are very large and tractors are used and hardly any any laborers work on it but the older time farms were all family home own farms and they were smaller in nature and uh, the family worked on it, uh, worked on it and so the farm uh, uh, be crisscrossed with path, pathways where the laborers walked or the, where the family walked and the soil would get hard and so the Lord Jesus says that the sower sowed the seed and some seed fell on the, the pathways where the birds came and ate them up and then the Lord Jesus said, some seed fell on rocky ground where the, the, there wasn't much uh, depth of soil. And so the plants did sprout, but they dried up because they had no root. And then the parable goes on that some seed fell among thorny or uh, a place where there was lots of weeds. And these plants did grow up, but the weeds and the thorns choked it up and there wasn't any fruit. Or there wasn't much fruit and the fourth type of soil was of course good soil where there was abundant growth and there was uh, fruit and the Lord said some bear hundredfold some sixtyfold and some thirtyfold uh, before I continue let's let us pray father I give this message to you I pray that your words will come up what you want to say would come up. Let it not be my words, Lord, but what you want to say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So first, let's, let us look at the pathway type of soil. Uh, the Lord Jesus says in uh, Matthew 13 and verse 19, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. And in NIV it says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom the seed was sown beside the road. So just imagine the pathway in the farm. Um, do you think putting more seeds on the pathway will help? 
Uh, Greg is a landscaper, so he's probably the most qualified to answer this question. And obviously not, uh, it, because the ground is hard, the pathway is very hard. Putting more seeds will not help. It will just mean that the birds will have more food to eat. And interestingly, this is exactly what most of us do. When we encounter somebody with hard soil, we continue to give, in, give in them more and more gospel message, more gospel message. So we actually putting more seeds on the pathway. And what happens, the birds keep getting fatter and the person does not even change. So I believe what we need to do is we need to change our text. We need to change our method in these cases. Uh, pray that God will change that soil. That's the first thing we need to do. Second, we know that lots of water will soften any soil. Um, when we had these Brisbane floods, you obviously saw that. Uh, after continuous rain for a week, there were some places on uh, where I live where I put my foot and my foot started going down. Normally it's very hard land, so lots of water will soften the land. And uh, many of us come, uh, have come to know the Lord through the love of other Christians. So love will soften the land. Love, love excess water and it softens the land. And in many of the poorer countries, uh, uh, Christians have been shown love through giving of uh, groceries and other help to the poorer people. And countless sick people are being healed in the name of Jesus in the poorer countries. And so this is showing, showing Christian love and many people are being saved through this. People who would normally be, would reckon to be hard soil. The Lord Jesus said about the seed that falls on the rocky ground, He said, He is the word and does not understand it. So to us the gospel is very obvious, isn't it? Uh, we understand about the original sin and how we have inherited the uh, sinful nature and we know that God is holy and that we cannot approach a holy God on our own. And so we realize that we need a mediator. And the only person qualified for the job was the Lord Jesus Christ. He was perfect. He was the Son of the, uh, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And through our faith in Him, we are saved. He is our advocate. He is the one who qualifies us to approach God. But to explain this to an, uh, 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 other people may seem very hard. A lot of people just simply don't understand this. They've been exposed to Hinduism, Buddhism, and all these isms in schools, atheism. And so they don't understand. They think evolution is a fact. They don't believe that God created us. So I believe we need to change our tact when we encounter hard, this pathway sort of people. We need to explain the gospel in a way that makes it easy for them to understand. And uh, about a few years ago we came across a very simple way of sharing the gospel. It's called the three circles. I don't know if you, any of you have seen the three circles method of present, representing the gospel. Uh, and if you basically need a piece of paper and a pen, but however you can do it without a paper and pen. Uh, like one day I went to a, I was buying mangoes at a mango seller. Uh, somebody was selling mangoes from the house. And so I used three mangoes to do the three circles and they understood the gospel. Uh, I've got that on a video and uh, Michael is going to play, play for us on the screen. Three seconds. You turn on the television or look at your Facebook feed, it's very clear that we live in a broken world. There's a lot of death, a lot of disease and suffering. But we also see traces of beauty, like the beauty of a sunset or the lap of a child. And that's because God's design was perfect when he made it. There was no death or disease or suffering. But starting with the very first people, we as humans chose to go our own way and leave God's perfect design. And that's called sin. And sin is what led to
to brokenness in our world of us and sinfulness. Well, we don't like to be in brokenness, this state that we're born in. So we try to get out. So for some, they try to get out on their own by climbing the ladder of success at work or school, thinking that'll get them out. Others try to get out themselves by doing good things or being religious and going to church and helping people. And while those, those are great things, they, they don't get us out of brokenness. Some try to drown out the brokenness with drugs and alcohol or attempts at suicide or, or maybe even relationships. And these attempts to get out of brokenness ourselves end up snapping us back in with the bungee cord. But God loved us so much, he didn't want us to stay in brokenness. So he did for us what we could not do for ourselves. He provided the only way out. And that is through his son, Jesus. You see, Jesus came down into our world and allowed himself to be killed on a cross, taking on our sin. And three days later, he rose from the dead. And he declared that if anyone would turn from their way and surrender to him, and believe that Jesus came and died on the cross and rose from the dead, and would be willing to make him their king and their Lord, that they would be forgiven and made new, and would then be able to experience God's perfect design for their life. Now I want to ask you, which of these two would you say you're in? Are you still in brokenness? Or... Have you repented and believed in Jesus and are now back in his design? Okay, you're in brokenness. Well, which one of these two do you want to be? Okay, great. Well, is there anything that keeps you from turning from your way and believing in the gospel of Jesus and making him your Lord, your King? Okay, great. You know, when I chose to make this decision, I prayed a simple prayer, very similar to this picture. I just told God that I'm sorry for my sin that I left your design and for the ways that I've tried to get out of brokenness on my own. I'm ready to turn from my way and surrender to you. And I believe this is true. And I want to make you my Lord so I can become you and experience your design for my life. Is that something you'd like to do? And then just pray with me. So this is the Three Circles Gospel Presentation. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Yeah, we were taught this in our church, and then we have to sit and practice growing everything, going through all the uh, steps. It's very easy to do once you get used to it. Even the drawings are very simple. And if you want to learn this method, just go to YouTube and type three circles, passport presentation, and um, it's got several versions of it. This is the simplest, and some, some people make it slightly more complicated, but I like this one because it's very simple. And it really works. I've used it on several people, and they really understand what. what and also, it's um, like when he said to them, uh, "Have you ever heard of three circles?" And they said, "No, I don't know." Then you sort of talk to them uh, through it, and they don't even know. Uh, they're not even aware what you're going to be doing. See? And so they're interested, and then you present the gospel in that way, and they are not offended when you do that. So next time you encounter the path pathways type of soil, just don't put more soil in there, uh, sorry, more seeds in there. More seeds won't help. And and don't do the opposite and just give up and say, no, that's hopeless. We can't do anything there. But pray and show love. And uh, that will soften their heart. Consider, and, uh, consider your method and change your method so that they understand the word and so that the word may be effective. The second soil we see in this parable mentions the rocky soil. Um, I don't know if you've been to a place where there is a soil that is very rocky. Where I live, uh, in some places you can actually see the rock. Um, there's grass and then there will be areas where there's, you can just see the rock. There's hardly any top soil. So the, uh, the, farm, the farmer where he sowed Eventually had evidently had this area where there was very little topsoil, and some seed fell among this rocky soil. 
And the Lord Jesus says in the verse 21, but he endureth for a while. That means he lasted for just a little while. So how long does a while last? Maybe a day, maybe a week, maybe a month, maybe a year, maybe even several years. But when problems and persecutions come, there is a falling away from the faith. I'm sure you've all heard the story of the fisherman's stories of the big one that got away. <laughs> and unfortunately, we are letting a lot of big ones get away by not following up on the big, on the seed that falls on the uh, rocky soil. And many of us were not born in Christian homes, uh, especially those of us who were not born in Australia. We were born in, uh, like I was born in a Muslim home. Jack was born in a Hindu home. So we were exposed to Christianity. And uh, as a result, we were very hard soil. And uh, we simply wouldn't be here if it was, wasn't for the hard work of the people who followed us up. Uh, some of these people went church leaders, they went pastors, but some of them were, uh, some of, many of them were just simple Christians like us. But they kept following us up. They kept sort of inviting us to youth meetings, kept inviting us to Sunday school events, kept in inviting us to church events. And there were many times we were very, uh, instead of uh, doing what they wanted, we went. We, we played sports. They invited us to church. We would we would go one week, two week, and then we'd start playing sports, playing soccer on a Sunday, or playing golf on a Sunday, or we we go fishing on Sunday, and so we'd miss church. But these people kept falling up or us up, falling us up, hard hard rock people, and as a result, we are in church today. So if you encounter hard rock people, uh, a seed that has fallen on rocky soil, don't give up on them. Mm -hmm. Keep following, in, following them up. Uh, you know that weather uh, breaks down soil. The wind, the rain, the sun, all beating down on the rock, breaks it down. And so the rocky soil of people's heart can be broken broken by God's love, by our love, by persistent follow-up, and uh, just keeping at it, by not giving up. So please don't discount rocky soul people, but keep following them up. Uh, the Lord Jesus said in verse 21 that since they have no root, that's the reason they fall away, because there's no root there. It's important that we ourselves are rooted in God's love. We are rooted in the Word of God. And for this we need to daily read the Word. We need to memorize the Word, understand it, and we need to meditate on it. We need to hear the Word of God preached in our churches, and we need to listen to the Word of God expounded in Bible studies. I know people who seem to be mature Christians, and some of them um, I can think of them as people who actually followed me up as well. But they then walked away from the faith. They seem to have roots. And they seem to be people who are strong in the Lord. But maybe their roots dried up because they didn't read the word. Maybe they didn't persist in their Christian fellowship. So it's important that we have firm roots and we are grounded on the word of God. Now the third type of soil is the one with lots of weeds and thorns. Now I believe these are the people who make a commitment to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. But the thorns and weeds make them unfruitful. These people may still be Christians, uh, but unfruitful Christians or bearing very little fruit. The weeds and things of, uh, thorns of life are stopping them from being fruitful. I also ask myself often, am I being fruitful in my life? Am I being uh, fruitful in my spiritual life? The Holy Spirit can show us if we are being fruitful or not. The Holy Spirit can show us where the weeds and thorns in our lives are. Now when we see a garden that's full of weeds, 
what are our thoughts? Obviously, we think that it's a garden that's not been cared for. It's a garden that's been neglected. It's untended. Now, the soil itself may be very good. Uh, you can see uh, some gardens with weeds, and the weeds are very healthy, fresh, healthy weeds growing in the garden. So the soil itself is healthy, but it's just uncared for, untended. It's neglected. So either the gardener is very busy with other activities, <coughs> he's doing other things. He, the gardener doesn't have time for the garden. And just a side note here, one person's weed might be, uh, be an, another person's food. Uh, one of the most common weeds in Australia, anywhere you dig the soil and put a little bit of water, emeralds will come up and pigweed will come up. And we actually buy money to buy it. In Fiji, we used to go to the vegetable market and buy emeralds in a bunch. And we used to buy pigweed. But here it just goes uh, in abundance. So not everything that you consider weed is a weed. In our Christian life, I believe the greatest weed is entertainment, it's television, it's social media, sports, and social events. All these weeds can crowd, up, crowd our lives and stop us maturing as Christians to produce um, fruit. Now many people spend hours on uh, entertainment have no, and have no time to read the Bible, and they have no time to pray. Now the Bible is the Word of God, and if we believe that it is the Word of God, then we should set aside time to read it. God is real, and we know God is real. And if we believe that God is real, we should set aside time to talk to Him, to worship Him, and uh, to enjoy His presence. Now it always pains me when people say to me that they don't have time to read the Bible. They say we don't have time to pray. Uh, they don't have a time to have a quiet time. And I've encountered many people uh, like uh, Jeff would know that there, there were many people we visited in Fiji who had problems. And when we visit them, we ask them, do you read the Bible? Do you pray? Do you have a quiet time? And they, the general answer is, I don't have time for all these things. I'm so busy. I believe that we need to make time for this important thing. Um, we need to prioritize our time so that we have time for these things. Uh, uh, one of the things I've discovered is that I need to get to bed early. So that just before I sleep I can read a chapter of the Bible, I can pray and then go to, go to sleep. And then in the morning I can wake up early because I've gone to bed early. And I can spend quality time with God in the morning, have a good quiet time. So if you think you don't have time to read the Bible or pray, just prioritize your time. The soil with weeds can be a very well-meaning good Christian, but with wrong priorities. So, so those, they struggle to do the things that will make them fruitful in, in their life. The fourth soil we'll look at is the good soil. <coughs> Uh, and obviously in the good soil there is healthy growth and the result is much fruit. And everyone knows that good soil produces good, uh, good plants. We also know that good uh, soil gets depleted in nutrients. So we need to replenish it. We need to put uh, uh, compost or uh, maniwa or other things. So the modern day farmer will put lots of pet fertilizer on it. Now reading the Bible, praying, uh, having Christian fellowship, I believe that replenishes our soil and makes make the soil healthy again. Now the interesting thing is the soil itself cannot differentiate between good seed and bad seed. It will grow whatever is put in there. And if the soil is good, it will produce healthy weeds. So our job as Christians is to make sure that we only allow good seeds to fall on our hearts. And if uh, bad seeds do grow in our hearts, we, our job is to pull them out. Don't let them grow. And in case weeds do start uh, to grow in our hearts, after all we live in a fallen world. We live in a sinful world. It's far easier to pull out the weeds when they're young, 
when they're immature. The weeds, when you pull them out, when they're young, it does less damage to the soil, less damage to the other plants. So little niggly problems that come into our lives, it's better that we deal with them when they first come. Just a small misunderstanding over time, if, it, if it's left to simmer, can result in a big uh, emotional trauma for us. And we think it's a big problem. It, and sometimes, uh, then you, uh, if, if it involves another person, you go and talk to them, you find out that that wasn't the case at all. It was just a misunderstanding. But a small thing left to simmer can really affect our spiritual well-being. So it's best to deal with weeds as soon as they, uh, as soon as they start sprouting, and in, 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 if we let the weeds grow to a maturity and they produce seeds, then the situation becomes worse. Because you can pull the weeds out, but the seeds will remain for it to grow again. So let us deal with problems as they arise. So we need to take captive of every thought and make it, uh, make it submit to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pride, lust, laziness, lying, bitterness, death, everything needs to submit to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we let the weeds grow and they mature, then we're in a worse situation. Um, you all know that if a habit gets entrenched in us, it's very hard to break the habit, whether it's a good habit or a bad habit. So let's deal with these things before they take root. Hebrews 12 1 says, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. So let's get, a, get rid of all the weeds that would be hindering us. Let us keep our souls healthy by removing all weeds. Now I've been working with some non-Christians doing some landscaping work, uh, similar to what Greg does. And I'm shocked at the language that they speak. And often they uh, listen to songs on their mobile, and they take it up really loud. And uh, I've been shocked at the lyrics of the song. They freely, the lyrics are freely used as uh, swear words and uh, lustful words and all these words that are really in fact, last week I, it got to a stage that I had to go and speak to a guy. I said, please can we change it to a nicer station so we don't have to listen to all this foul language all the time on the radio. Uh, they did change it and they didn't seem to mind, but I think they weren't very happy about it. And the station they changed it to, uh, it was slightly nicer, but there was still the words weren't very, up, up, weren't very uplifting. So if you talk to a young person and you listen to their language, you'll know what, where that language comes from. That's what they're listening to. The bad seeds are being planted in their hearts, and that's what comes out of their mouth. So everything we watch, everything we listen to, it all affects, that's the seeds being planted in our hearts. And even if our uh, soil is good, whatever seed is planted will start to take root. I believe someone beautifully illustrates this point. Verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the uh, seat of the scornful. So, verse 1 says that we need to avoid all bad seed, all evil seed, all wrong seed. And then verse 2 says, But he delights in the law of the Lord, and on it he meditates day and night. So that's the good seed coming into our heart by meditating on the Word of God. And the result is in verse 3. It's like a tree planted by the streams of water, which bears its fruit in season, and its leaf never uh, withers. Whatever it does prospers. So this beautifully illustrates that we need to avoid evil seed, get in good seed, and then the result will be fruitfulness. So what are the fruits we should be bearing? I will finish with this. Well, we all know about the fruits of the Spirit, don't we? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I hope I've got the nine. Uh, also, we should be fruitful in winning souls for the kingdom. 
Uh, we should be fruitful in serving the Lord with whatever gifts the Lord has given us. And I was so glad to see Lynn playing the organ. She's using her gifts for the Lord's glory. So everything the Lord has given us, we should use our gifts for the Lord's glory. Uh, Peter, First Peter 1 Peter 1.5 says, uh, sorry, 2 Peter 1.5 says, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to good, goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, in conclusion, I'd like to say that let us remember that good soil will grow good plants as well as good weeds. Sorry, not good weeds, but weeds in a healthy way. So let us make every effort to keep our soil good by um, removing all evil seeds that fall into it. And also let us remember that the goal of the seed is not to uh, just grow, but to bear much fruit. The goal, the goal of the good soil is to bear much fruit. And if we encounter rocky soil, or soil in the pathway, let us not give up, but let us continue to pray, continue to uh, persist in following up, and persist in uh, showing love. And finally, I'd like to just say something. If you see someone's garden is overgrown, and I'm talking spiritually, let's remember it's not our job to go and pull the weeds from the garden. It's their job. Uh, in fact, some people even mind if you tell them that there's weeds in their garden. So our job is to pray and maybe gently guide them, gently lead them, and let them deal with the weeds in their garden. Let us pray. Father, I thank you that you love us and you care for us and that you've chosen us as your children. And, and Father, I thank you that uh, you've given us this task of being fruitful, that others may see the fruit in us, in us and be drawn to you, that others may enjoy the fruit that you've given our lives. So Father, I pray that we'll be productive Christians, effective Christians, and we'll remove all the bad seed from our life that we may bear good fruit and so bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.